Hey, welcome back to another video, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Great to have you along, as always. New t-shirt day today. I couldn't resist a little stop and not joke. Uh, after all the chat that's gone on about those lately on internet forums and stuff. Today's video is going to be looking at a couple of ways to protect a relative novice down an abseil. Okay. Um, there's you know loads of ways of doing it. I'm going to put a link up there to. Um, a releasable abseil setup that an instructor might use for like a taster session kind of thing but I'm thinking about a bit more in like real life where we've been climbing and abseiling is a means to an end so some principles might be the same for one of the methods for sure they might well they will um, but then we'll look at another method as well which is called a stacked abseil so first off let's look at a normal sort of uh, safety line style abseil we're going to imagine that we're at the top of a crag that's got some in situ tat. Uh, you, know, you can make this work if you've got to rig it or whatever, but let's just assume that's some in situ tat and it's got a mail on that's been cranked properly shut like they should be that we can't undo. So we've got to do some threading. All right? So we're going to go on two ropes because that's what we would normally do um, a lot of the time. And I'm going to get my blue rope and I'm going to poke that through the mail on first so it's ready threaded. Uh, I'll put another link up there to um, an, uh, a video all about setting up releasable abseils um, as well because that might be of interest but when you're setting them up if you're joining two ropes overhand for me and just make it the neatest knot in the world properly dressed no weird crossings no gaps in it or anything like that and then personally I do a second and I, I put that up tight to the first one and again equally well dressed and everything as well I'm going to get that out of the way then the blue line is going to be our abseil line, so I'll lap that into my hands, give a shout of rope, wait a couple of seconds, launch it off, wait a couple of seconds so that people don't just go rope, look up and get a rope in the face. What's going to be in the end of that rope as well? A little knot, just in case it doesn't reach the bottom okay. We're sending a relative novice down, so I really want to be very sure it does reach the bottom, but it's just a habit, isn't it? If you do that every time, you're not going to forget. Right, so the, the red or pink, whatever colour it is, rope, that's going to be our uh, safety line one. So we're going to find the other end of the rope, which I'm trying to spot in a mess of rope down here. Um, there he is. And into this, right, my relative novice, I'm either going to get them to tie in or I can tie a knot and get them to clip in. As I'm on my own here, I shall tie a knot uh, and pretend they're gonna clip into it, okay? Get it dressed nicely as always. No excuses for a knot neat knot, is there? It's got kind of a length of tail that needed some uh, shortening, so put a stopper on it. I'm gonna do a stopper touching and everything. Pull a bit of slack through. Now I've said this is gonna be the safety line, so I'm gonna get myself an HMS carabiner, a nice big one, and find a nice solid point up here. Let's use these two points in this instance. And that is going to become an Italian hitch point. All right. Put it in. Okay. So now I can clip my mate into that and they can be safe, okay? Worth pointing out that if I'm anywhere near an edge, I'm always going to be clipped into something. I don't do it on sling mountain for the most part because it, you know, it's just a load of rope going on already. So an extra sling in there just kind of adds to the confusing picture, I think. So uh, it's worth just saying though, I would be clipped in as would my mate before any of this gets set up. So there's no chance of a little slip turning into something um, not so good. But I just don't do it because it's clearer, I think. So at this point, I've got a safety line for my mate. I can just dangle there for a second. I've got my pre-threaded lines ready for me to abseil on afterwards. My mate could just abseil on this, but it's kind of just pulling that knot against the mail. I don't think that's kind of a, a perfect situation. So what I'd rather do is refix this line. And I could just fix this with an Italian, uh, sorry, a clove hitch. And that would be okay, but it's not releasable. And the instructor in me likes things to be releasable to solve potential problems. So what I'm going to actually going to do is put an Italian hitch in here and clip him up. Maybe up here to just keep it a little bit clearer of what's going on. i put my Italian in there. Okay, and then this is now going to be the abseil line. So I'm going to tie that off with a slippery hitch. Right, and then pull a bit more through and then just two half hitches, all right? 
Now, I haven't been left with loads of... Sorry for that banging. does my head in that noise. Uh, I haven't been left with loads of slack here, only a little bit, but it might be enough just to solve a little problem of something getting stuck in the belay device or whatever, so I do think it's worth doing. So now let's just have a pause there for a second. Safety line over here, line in the middle, threaded, ready to go, and then just uh, made it independent by having the Italian hitch tied off up there. So this now is the abseil line. My mate can be in on that in readiness, right? And now they can get themselves onto the abseil itself as well. You could extend this or not extend this. It depends what the situation is. I probably would extend the abseils. They're on a sling and everything. So they can be clipped in with a lanyard. So it's multi-purpose. And it's just kind of future-proofing them, isn't it? So I probably would, to be honest. Do that up on them. Do that up on them. And then they're good to go, aren't they? So all I do is with both hands on this uh, braking strand. Obviously, I'm just going to pull on this one to simulate it. Both hands on this one. I'm just going to let that feed through. So they're abseiling. I'm not lowering. But if they did decide to let go of that braking strand on their side for any reason, I can just pull hard on that and I've got them and they're good to go and they can sort themselves out. Why might they let go? Well, they might just have a, a funny moment or something and forget what they're supposed to be doing. Might be going down some slippery gully or something and they sort of just bang into the rock enough to make them let go. So having this back up is a really nice idea. So just to reiterate, safety line, middle pre-threaded for me to abseil in a minute and separate line for them to have sail on made it independent by doing tied off italian okay so when they get down to the bottom all they need to do right is unclip their abseil device relay plate get that out of uh you know to tidy up now all that untied so it's all nice and neat we know it reaches the bottom now because they've just been down on it so no i'm not going to bother keeping a knot in or anything all I need to do is undo the red rope, get him out of the way, so we can drop the rest of that rope down now, because uh, there might still be some left up here, so we drop the rest of it down. We can clear this up as well, because we don't need that anymore. Get that out of the way. Clip him back to me, get all that knot out of it. And what am I left with? Should be left with a nice clear abseil ready to go. Great, so we've just got basically a retrievable abseil there, haven't we? I can abseil down, pull the uh, red rope afterwards, jobs are good at. Okay, Okay. so method two is going to be like a next step, and that's going to be a stacked abseil. So I'll get myself set up on my normal sort of extended sling setup, because it's multi-purpose. Uh, I'll put a link up here to another video I've done on retrievable abseils that goes through all of this um, if I haven't done already. Did I mention that before? I can't remember. I lose track of what I've said half the time. Right, I'm going to clip myself in this time to any strong point up there. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the normal kind of setup bits really. I get my prussic out. Always bang on about these Simmond sewn prussics. I did get a question the other day as to how long they are, and maybe I haven't answered that one before. These are 60 centimetre ones, right? I think you can get, uh, certainly in other brands, you can get 50 centimetres as well. 50 could work. Um, I prefer to have slightly longer, and if I need to shorten it, I'll tie a knot in it, but 50 could work. You can also get like 30s. I just wouldn't bother with a 30. They're a bit too short for anything, really. Uh, right, clip that in. Do him up, pull a bit of slack through, and I can now get myself on with my normal setup into my extended knot there. Load that up. This is all familiar stuff, hopefully, if you're watching this video, just normal abseil setup stuff. Okay, so once you're in, normally you'd slide this all up to the top, wouldn't you? So you're just ready to abseil, but it's a stacked abseil that we're looking at. So what we're also going to have is our mate next to us. So I've got a, a little helper here, which is uh, Oreo the dog's favourite little toy just hidden around the side. Here he is, good old Giraffe. He's had him for nearly five years now. Uh, giraffe is going to be our novice mate, all right? And I'm not strangling him. I'm putting it around his neck, but he'll be all right. He's had a little repair to his neck. He got, uh, yeah, had some stitching once upon a time. So there he is. That's him uh, last fitted in. Yeah, do an overhand, same as always, and then we're going to clip him in up to there. OK, 
can get to any again anywhere up here as long as it's a solid point. What can they do now? They can get their ATC and load that in. This person isn't going to use a plastic. I'll explain a little bit why in a second to add to what I've already said about that. Remember, I'm not waiting this rope or anything, so they just pull a bit through, clip it in. Jobs are good in. Okay. You can then slide them up to the top out of the way. And you might well have another person, often for work, I have two people with me, so they can go into there as well. Exactly the same setup, and I'm there as well. We've got three people on the rope. Yeah, you can do it as many as you like, I suppose, really. But let's just do it with the one person, the one giraffe uh, for now. So they're safe on the lanyard and they're on their ATC. I'm safe on my lanyard, on my ATC, and I'm on my prusset. Okay. I'm ready to abseil now. And I'm going to leave this relative novice up there. But they really haven't got anything to do, have they? The only thing they've got to do is unclip their lanyard and go. Could they do that now? Yes, they could. Definitely they could. I, with the novice, I'd rather they did now, to be honest. So they unclip that. They can clip it back to their harness or whatever. I'm just going to clip it to there for now. So all they've got to do when they start abseiling is lean back and go. If you're thinking, but they're not on anything safe at the moment other than ATC, well, I'm backing them up, right? Because when I go, I'm going to clip that back to the red because that's what I've got to pull. Right, when I have sail down, great, this rope all goes tight. This person can't move, can they? Brilliant, I'm backing them up. When I get to the bottom, da -da -da, all the way, the rope will go slack and they can start to go. All I'll do is I would actually stay on the rope in case I need to do any ascending or anything if they had an issue. But I don't think they will because, right, they have sailed down now. They're holding on to the braking strand of rope, going down, going down, going down, same as always, great. If they let go or something, they haven't got a prusik, ah, so what's going to back them up? Well, I am because I'm watching intently and I'm holding on to these braking strands of rope. So if they let go, I just pull down really tight. And that's no different from them holding on. So call it a fireman's break. Um, there might be other names for it, but that's the one I know it has. That's great. And actually, if they slip and let go and maybe they've hit their head and they've been knocked unconscious, I mean, we love these worst case scenarios, don't we? Actually, as they're leaning back, I can do the descending for them. I can just pull on that. You can see what's happening now. That's no different from you doing your abseil, is it? It's just that I'm doing it from the bottom. So that's really good. What would happen if they're abseiling down on a prusset and that happened and they're stuck halfway up there, sort of unconscious, dangling on the prusset? Well, then I'd have to go up to them, wouldn't, that, wouldn't I? So actually, you're making your life easier. When we're all at the top, right, doing our, just sort of getting set up and everything, and I start to weight the rope, yeah, it's actually, let's just clear that up a little bit, get him out there, okay, so get rid of the twists. Now what we put on red. As I'm leaning back, because they're on their extended abseil, they don't get pulled around too much. You can see they can sort of stay where they are as I'm swinging around. If they have got a prusik on to do that, they'd be right, right here and moving all the time as well as so they get pulled around. So actually it's quite nice not to have a prusik on that one, right? It could be that the next step, once they've passed the novice, uh, the you know, proper novice stuff and you want to introduce prusik, so you do want to introduce them at some point, don't you? You've got to think about where you introduce the prusik. Would you like to do it with a backup? Yes, maybe. Would you rather do it with a safety line or with the stacked abseil set up? You know, it depends. It's entirely up to you. Um, that's, that's climbing, isn't it, right? As long as you can justify it to yourself, you're winning, right? So there you go. There's two methods of protecting novices down an abseil. Um, I hope that's been of interest, of course. As always, you can ask any questions you like and I'll answer as best I can. I did flash up earlier in the video, there's a competition that you might have seen already on Facebook. Uh, it's a competition to win a Climbers Club guidebook of your choice. All you have to do is go onto the, our Facebook page, JB Mountain Skills, you'll find it, and you'll have a read of it there and do what you need to do. And if you do enter, good luck. Uh, that's running till, uh, I'm going to pick the winner on Monday morning. So I think that's the 18th. What's the date today? 17th, yeah, 18th. So Monday the 18th. So if you're watching this video after that, sorry you missed out on this one, but uh, do enter if you can. I hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon. Yeah.